Hello and welcome to Capital Market Live on Channel Television. I'm Laddie Williams. Well, it's the final episode, you call it the finale of uh, 2023. What an incredible year uh, for risk assets. Uh, but uh, definitely coming from 2022, we know it's uh, most uh, analysts said it was risk off sentiment, but definitely we see uh, risk assets uh, really performed in 2023. But let's get a sense of the last trading week of 2023 for most of the markets we track here. Starting in Europe, we see European stocks uh, ended uh, Friday's session in the green market a positive end to a solid year. We see the DAX uh, up about 0.30%. FTSE 100 in London, uh, that was up 0.14% uh, to close on Friday. Uh, the CAC 40, uh, that was at 7,543 points, up 0.11%. A uh, Spanish pharmaceutical group, uh, Griffles, was the biggest stock mover, climbing around 8.4% after announcing it will sell a 20% stake in Shanghai Raz, a blood uh, products firm, uh, to China's higher for approximately $1.8 billion. Let's take it over to Asia now. We see Asia Pacific markets uh, fell on the last trading day of 2023, with China stocks being the sole exception as the country's tech companies continue their advance. Um, if we see the Asia markets there, we see the Nikkei 225, uh, that was down 0.22%. Uh, Shanghai um, proposal was uh, 2,974 points up 0.68 percent, while the Hang Seng had a marginal rise there, 0.02 percent close on Friday. Let's get a check on U.S. markets now. See, uh, U.S. Uh, stocks fell slightly, but the S&P um, 500 uh, closed uh, out 2023 with a surprising gain of 24 percent. That was the year-to-date gain, but we see it's all red um, there. The tech-heavy Nasdaq uh, closed down 0.28 percent. Uh, S&P 500 is down 0.56%. We know the NASDAQ, that's about 15,000 points for the NASDAQ. Well, let's uh, move on now from global markets. That's out of the closing gong at the Nigerian Exchange Limited, uh, being run by veteran Nollywood actor Richard Mofe Damijo to signify the end of trading activities for the year 2023 as the NGX ranks seventh among the best performing stock markets in the world. At the close of Friday's session, the highly respected movie star and writer in an interview with journalists revealed the reasons why the um, actors in the entertainment industry are having more interest in the domestic stock market. On his part, the chief executive uh, of the office of the uh, NGX, the newly appointed chairman designate of the exchange group, Mr. Temi Popola, uh, pointed out some of the factors that drove the stock market higher in the outgoing year and the expectations for 2024. Take a listen. It's, it's soft power. The, the entire world is looking beyond, you know, mineral, mineral deposits, uh, looking beyond gold and agricultural products. You know, uh, people want people want to consume content. The machine is a beast. It must be fed. It feeds on content. I'm sure you are aware of how many Nigerians make money on YouTube now. You know, there are there are millions there are millions in dollars. You know, uh, on YouTube today. So you need to have that machine oiled, and that is why you see the interface or the convergence between uh, entertainers and, of course, the stock exchange. And our business is called show business. There's show, there's business. There must be a convergence, and when it converges, those in charge of business must come take a look, closer looking, with a view to uh, capitalizing or making capital of what we are. We have already started creating. We see a government that, you know, is committed to capital markets. As a matter of fact, as you would know, um, performance this year was over 40 odd percent. And one of the things that drove that was very strong uh, uh, pronouncements by the government of the day with very strong reforms. We expect that to carry through. You also spoke to some of the government agencies like the Minister of Finance Incorporated, who have spoken very publicly as to what they would be doing with the capital markets, how the capital markets will be used to raise revenues, how the capital markets to be used to hold some of their portfolio companies to better governance standards, how the capital market to be used to create liquidity uh, for the government. So frankly speaking, as I think out, it's a lot more positives, you know, to, to, to be honest.
Interesting closing gong uh, summary uh, there. At the, that was the end of the uh, final trading session uh, right there at the end. GX was quite an interesting one with uh, veteran actor uh, Richard Moffat Damage. Well, let's get a summary of how the market actually closed uh, the week. Well, the local boss ended the last trading week of 2023 in the green, up 1.01%. Uh, you see the market cap there, 40.91 trillion. Uh, that was a new level. Uh, was hit for the first time ever this year. Uh, trading activity for the week was lower compared to last week with volume at 1.18 billion, value 31.42 uh, billion, while deals were at 23 point, uh, 23,969 deals in total uh, for the week. Let's look at the sector of performance. You see banking, that was up 1.08%. Consumer goods down 1.46%. That was the only laggard uh, for the week. While city insurance counter uh, shining 8.19% uh, to close the week. Uh, to the top gainers now, we see Multiverse Mining and Exploration PLC. That topped the gainers counter 32.93%. While we see for the losers counter now, uh, we see Deep Capital Management uh, and Trust PLC. Uh, it was down 15.94% uh, to end the week. See the top trades, Jai's Bank PLC, Zenit Bank PLC, and Transnational uh, Corporation PLC. Well, we see uh, quite a stellar performance there for the Nigerian exchange there for the equities, uh, the local equities market, 45.9%. Uh, percent year to date. Well, joining us now to analyze this feat and other matters is Mr. Rotimi Fake, your stockbroker on the NGX. Uh, great to have you on the show. And uh, thank you for spending your Saturday with us here. It's always a pleasure. Yes, you are, you are our last guest uh, for 2023 on Capital Market. We left that position right there for you. So let's get into it now. Looking at the performance this year, quite an incredible um, performance. But I'm wondering, you know, coming in from 2022 into 2023, definitely the sentiment was um, quite uncertain, you know, at, at that point. Did you see this coming? And who are the investors that enjoyed all this profit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, a lot of things did happen in the year 2023. Um, we saw quite, uh, it was election year anyway. And uh, we know fully well that election year is always very, very turbulent for the market. But if, they, if the person who eventually becomes the president is approved by the capital market, then we see a turnaround in the performance of the market. And uh, I think um, quite a, a good number of things actually played out for the market this year. Uh, this year is again marking the second time we are having over 40% uh, year-to-date position for the market. We last had something like this in the year 2020. Then the year that followed, I think we had about 16.9. Then uh, another one, 6 percent. Uh, then I think 30-something uh, percent, but now uh, for year 2023, 45.9 percent. And um, just as you did mention earlier, we are seeing a situation whereby the uh, OSHA index, the market cap, is hitting all-time high and so and um, just uh, we said that before this started that we may even see better performance for 2024 now prices uh, in the capital market up um, the price or the performance is in the future It's a forward market so we expect that one the new government uh, which has brought, uh, talking about renewed hope, looking at the various policies that have come forth, I think uh, we, 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 everybody is quite aware that this can make impact. We are yet to see that happening, but a lot of people quite believe that it's going to happen. Then secondly, uh, the quality of those that are in administration with the president, that also is playing out. And uh, thirdly, we, we are seeing a correlation uh, and uh, a cooperation between the f uh, fiscal authority and the monetary authority. Uh, because the two people, uh, Olayemi Kadosu and uh, um, Wale Edun, they both work together. So we believe that there's going to be a lot of synergy going forward. Because all along what we've seen in the past is a situation whereby the fiscal uh, authority goes right, 
the monetary authority goes left. And it's been a lot of struggle that is using monetary um, instruments alone to fight inflation and all the other microeconomic uh, um, uh, indices. But this time around, I think a, a lot of investors, both local and uh, foreign, believe that this correlation and cooperation is definitely going to work out well for the market. Then third, uh, fourthly, we've seen the performance of the stocks, especially the banking sector stocks. They are the most liquid stocks in the market. At least uh, when you talk about the liquidity in the market, is the banking sector stocks, whether anyone likes it or not, takes about um, 60, 70 percent of the entire market. And be that as it may, we've seen quite stellar performances from the banks. We've seen um, a UBA churning out 449 billion after tax profit for nine months. We've seen Zenit 430. We've seen GTCO 360. And all these stocks, they are, uh, any per share is in the upward of 12 naira. So there's no way I believe they'll be so stingy that they won't do at least 20% of what we are saying. Correct. So invariably, we're going to see them pay higher dividend than what they did last year. Some of them have demonstrated that already in the interim dividend that they paid. So investors are quite um, excited about the performance and we see and we see the excitement exactly. right there in the market and they will rather hold on to those stocks than sell but but looking at it, that means it's safe to say that the catalyst for 2023 was the transition to a new government at this point yes. but now we have the new government yeah is the catalyst over it's not over because we've seen policies being churned out we've seen the quality of um uh persons in positions of ministers and at the same time we we are hopeful that these policies will work and one of the things that is going to definitely work out for this government more is that the local refinery especially down Gote refinery and uh, the one in Porter court are starting production so definitely there is going to be less pressure on our foreign exchange foreign exchange reserve so def uh, and that also will imply that it may be a, a, an attraction for foreign portfolio investors to start taking this, another look at Nigeria. So if they come with the level that we are presently, I think uh, 2024 will definitely be better. So we might be looking at 100,000 points maybe for the all share index if, if we continue with this momentum. Likely. Because we started this year, I think about 42, and now we are at um, um, 74. Yeah, quite an incredible so drop there. It's, it's quite germane that what we've seen uh, uh, in 2023 is a starting point for 2024. And definitely, we are seeing it going northward. I, I, you did mention you know, the refineries are coming on stream at this point. So yeah. going into 2024, looking at that oil and gas counter, okay. do you see this rubbing off on that counter, seeing that Nigeria is going to start refining its own um, oil? Uh, well, yeah, I, I see it rubbing off. I think uh, when the price of um, uh, PMS and other petroleum, refined petroleum products were increased, we saw that um, transiting to upward movement for the uh, petroleum marketing companies listed on the exchange. Now that we are going to have a stable regime for pricing and uh, the local production is definitely going to be uh, uh, an enticement to those uh, um, petroleum marketing companies. But what that implies also is that the kind of uh, liquidity that they usually needed to actually muster products and all of that, they know fully well now that they can always go to Dangote at any point in time, get products and move on. So it's going to be, uh, bring about less, uh, less financial cost to them. So we're going to see many majority of the stocks in that sector doing exceedingly well and also all other sectors within the uh, equity market. Yeah, we'll definitely be watching out for that. I'm, I'm sure investors listening might be wondering, is it time to start taking position <laughs> going into 2024 is for oil and gas uh, uh, stocks? But we'll definitely be watching out. But uh, after the break, we're going to be drilling down on the best performing stocks in 2023. That's what we're going to be uh, looking at right after this break. Do stay with us. This is Capture Market. <music> Welcome
Welcome back. Well, right here on Capital Market, we're analyzing uh, the equities uh, performance in 2023. And I still have with me right here in the studio, Mr. Rotimi Fakai, a stock broker, and he's been giving us uh, the drivers, basically, of uh, this stellar performance in 2023. So, uh, Mr. Fakai, we're going to look at something now. We're going to look at the best performers right here, top five. So we see Transco Hotels PLC, 2023 gained a whopping 1,022%. And 1 million Naira invested in Transco Hotels in, say, in January, that would have fetched you about 11.22 million. Then you'd have had a real dirty December if you actually invested in that. Champs Holdings uh, comes in second, 795.5%. 8.9 million uh, would be uh, your profit if you invested 1 million um, Naira. CWG PLC, 721 uh, percent, 8 mil. Uh, Transco, uh, that uh, gave about 666.4 percent, 7.66 million. Quite, quite, quite incredible, uh, these stocks here. And, you know, looking at this performance, you know, at this time, as an investor coming into 2023, how would you have seen these stocks and perceived that they would do so well? How do you find these winners? And going into 2024, what's, what's the strategy for these stocks? Uh, well, I think uh, for me, uh, it will have been very difficult to have predicted, especially for Transco, especially for Charms. Uh, but it will have been easier predicting for the banking sector stocks. I think virtually all the banking sector stocks did above 100%, except for GT Code, that did about 95 and Zenit about um, maybe 90. All the other ones did well above 100%. So for them, it would have been quite well predicted. But for the likes of uh, MRS, um, Charms, Transcorp, Transcorp, Transcorp Hotel, it could have been very, very tough. But I think uh, with what we have seen right now, it seems very much that uh, no stock can actually be underrated in the market because they all can pull their weight. So, but for 2024, uh, we've put this behind us now. We're starting afresh in uh, January 2nd. I believe strongly that uh, investors are yet to see the best of the market. Right. And, uh, you know, st still looking at these stocks, um, who would you say were the laggards of 2023? And, you know, some investors have this strategy where, um, take, say, these stocks don't do well in a, in, a, in, a, in a particular year, then there's a possibility investors might flock to that, you know, thinking that they might actually perform, you know, in the next year. Is that strategy something to look at going into 2024? Well, I think it may work, but you also need to look at the fundamentals of that particular stock. If the fundamentals are right, if they have good corporate governance, they have history of uh, good dividend payment in time past. They definitely, and if the kind of um, policies that we have is definitely going to help that particular sector where they belong to, then investors can plug to that. But otherwise, I think you just keep stick to the winners. Stick to the winners. So it's not a bad strategy sticking to the winners. Don't you think at some point in 2024 it might be profit taking? for some of these stocks, because they've given quite incredible gains. It, it, it's most unlikely. Like I did say earlier, that with our, um, our NARA becoming stable in 2024, when there is less pressure on the external reserve because of local production of, uh, um, local production of refined products, petroleum refined products, I mean refined petroleum products, then foreign portfolio investors are going to make Nigeria uh, another uh, the new destination. I, I'm talking about you know foreign uh, participation in the market. Okay. We see um, it hit about 23.74 percent in November. That's the highest you know in, in 2020. So we, we know the president has been going out there you know trying to woo investors. So uh, would you say it's working you know at this point, seeing that you know foreign participation on the NGX has actually increased. And do you see this momentum continuing into 2024? It definitely is going to continue. We're going to see not just foreign portfolio investment, we're going to also see foreign direct investment. And uh, if we have those two combined, they definitely is going to buffer our, uh, our dollar account, that is the external reserve. 
And if that happens, it's going to attract more foreign portfolio investors to come into the country. Because one thing that has actually gone bad for the foreign portfolio investors is the fact that if they bring in their dollar today, if in the next six months or 12 months, they cannot tell what level that, uh, I mean, the quantum of the dollar they're going to go back when they are going back to their country. So they're going to have to repatriate. But now, as it is, if we have a stable exchange rate, then definitely it will make them to stay even much longer than could have planned. So I believe that, um, I want to believe strongly that um, we've reached the low ebb, and the only way we can go now is up. All right, so uh, we, we talked about, you know, the NGX being the seventh, you know, best performing um, index right now. So I, I did see the EGX. The EGX did really well. Also, that's uh, the EGX 30 in Egypt. We saw that did about 66%. And the reason, you know, for that, that what the experts uh, gave for, for that was that Egyptians were using um, the local boss to hedge against currency devaluation and inflation. Would you say the same thing happened in Nigeria? Uh, well, I think um, something in that direction, but not quite. Because um, one thing that has actually helped us much is the low participation of foreign portfolio investors in Nigeria. And I think we've gotten to a, uh, to a threshold now whereby even if foreign portfolio investors do come, we won't have the kind of uh, um, uh, oscillation in prices that we used to have in the past. So the trajectory will definitely will still be a single direction that is upward. And even when we have a sinusoidal uh, movement, it's not going to be too much for any investor to bear. But I think as it is, for me, I believe um, the local investors have done quite well. And they believe more in the market now than ever. And at the same time, I think uh, if you look at the performance of the market this year, and you look at the monetary uh, instruments, definitely one has given more uh, return than the other. And the one that has given more return is the equity market. So that is going to sink in and help the market in the year 2024. Right, and, and looking at um, 2024 and uh, the, the macros at um, this point, we see inflation all-time high, the Naira you know, hitting an all-time low against the dollar. So how do you see this? Um, it's definitely the, the, the market wasn't phased in 2023 by this, but what do you see in 2024? Uh, well, like I did say, and we know so much at the same time that exchange rates and inflation are very much related. And uh, if we have um, a stable exchange rate, they definitely to also impact on inflation. And uh, one thing that this government needs to face uh, is the fact that we need to increase local production. Where we have advantage, the government has to help those in that sector to be able to uh, survive and begin to uh, succeed. And where we don't have a comparative advantage, then I think we may still allow importation from that. But one thing that is very germane at this time is that in order for us to come out of this quagmire, we must reduce our imports, even if we can increase our, income, uh, our exports. Yeah. Whichever way it is, we need to do everything possible to reduce our imports. Yeah, we have to import bills, less. Even if we are not exporting. Even if we're not exporting, yeah, because we're taking precious dollars, exactly. you know, out uh, at this time. And hard and, 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 yes, and definitely we've also seen talks about uh, maybe switching to the Chinese yuan, you know, going forward. But you ask yourself at the same time, are it, you still producing? It's still, enough? it's still not a way out. It's switching still not to a way yuan out. or, or any, any currency. currency is not a way out. Or maybe Bitcoin. The only way out <laughs> is encourage local production. Even those the Chinese, the uh, the Indians. And several other countries that are that are, that are the sources of our major imports, we can encourage them to come and cite their industries here. After all, it did happen, U.S. industries moved to China, and today we are seeing what is happening in China. So we can create the right ambience for other countries to come and invest here. For instance, somebody was saying jokingly that uh, Nigeria 
imports, I mean, or Toyota is the uh, most reading vehicle in Nigeria. So, if it is, why can't we have Toyota assembly in Nigeria? Yeah. So I think a government has to come up with such policies. If you cannot have an assembly in Nigeria, then the tariff that we're going to put on your, on your, imported, on your imports is going to be much more substantial than those that are... And we have local producers of cars uh, exactly. at this point. So. so we need to encourage those ones yeah. as much as possible so that there can be increase in employment. And when there is increase in employment, it goes all around. Because if, for instance, more people get employment, they may be able to buy products that are made in Nigeria and that will increase the productivity of those companies as well and also more tax revenue for the government. Yeah, so, so it's going to be a win-win situation. Just improve the, the business environment exactly. at this point. I will see that dynamo, that multiplier uh, effect you know, going forward. So it's just going to touch to, everything. It's just for them to turn on the dynamo. That's for it. them to be able to, the dynamo of local production. Right. Then we are there. Fantastic. Well said. Thank you so much uh, for coming on, Mr. Rotimi uh, Fakaj, your stockbroker, and our last uh, guest for the uh, for capital market in 2023. And definitely, we're all looking and hoping for the best, you know, going into 2024. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show today. My pleasure. And thank you uh, for watching. That's the show today. Remember, you can watch this again on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash channel television. And remember, you can also visit uh, our website, www.channelcv.com for more um, updates. Thank you for watching. I'm Ladi Williams. And remember, if you must sell, sell at the top. Bye-bye.